Welcome back everyone. Today I wanted to talk about kind of a hybrid subject of research and taxonomy of insects coupled with uh, paleo entomology and strange fossils. And it's centered around a very strange insect that we don't know where it belongs in the taxonomic hierarchy or really much of anything about it. It's a Cretaceous insect that was first documented in 2020 in this paper, uh, an unusual 100 million old holometabolin larva with a piercing mouth cone uh, that came out of, I believe, Germany and China, or is it just Germany? I think all of these are Germans, um, but the, the sample came from Burma or Myanmar. Um, and it was a very uh, strange sort of sample. So let me show you what this, insect is i will link this paper into the description it's not a terribly long paper and it's free access it's open access so any of you should be able to read it although it is a couple years old so it's not you know groundbreaking but this is what uh this 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 insect looked like so we have the actual insect in the amber here this is an image of the amber and then this next to it b is an image of an artist's uh, colorization of this digital image, of a digital representation. So this is the actual insect, this is the representation that is all labeled here. So there are some very strange features about this insect. Right away, you can kind of tell it's hollow metabola. This is a larva, not a nymph. So there are no wing pads. So this is not something that would have the remnant or the beginnings of a wing in its in its uh, larval or nymphal stage so it's not uh metabola sorry brain turned off there so this doesn't have the remnants of or the beginning portions of wings in the nymphal stage so not metabola and it's not one of the apterous insects this looks nothing like the zygentoma or anything like that so it's some sort of larva so this is some kind of in, uh, insect in holometabola. Other things that you can see that are very, very strange. Up on the head, this is the head capsule and the antennae and the mouth parts. The antennae are relatively large for a larva. Most larvae have tiny little antennae and most of holometabola have chewing mouth parts. There are very few, or relatively few, con considering how many holometabola there are, uh, holometabolous insects with piercing, sucking mouth parts. It's a very strange sort of setup. And not only is it a piercing, sucking mouth part, the whole head is kind of formed into this beak-like shape, which is very strange. And then these little blue appendages to the side that are the length of the antennae are the maxillary palpi, most likely. So then the question is, well, where are, the, where are the maxillae and the mandibles and all that? They are likely in this beak. Uh, and this beak is, if you've ever seen a cross-section of um, like a mosquito mouth part, like the mosquito beak, on the interior, it still has the ma mandibles and the maxillae and stuff, but they're formed into thin little needle-like stylets, and they're uh, compressed together to form channels for sucking and injecting saliva. So that's likely what's going on here. But the maxillary palpi are huge, and you don't really see any labial palpi. You have the pronotum here, which is relatively large, and you have various small sclerites running down the thorax and abdomen, which is kind of a unique arrangement. And then you have these enormous abdominal appendages, which no idea what these are, and the authors of the paper can't really tell us what these are either. This is a very strange morphology. They have some ideas, I have some ideas as well, but things aren't quite adding up. And then we go to the butt end of the insect and you don't really have any complex structures back here. You don't have large cerci or anything like that. There's, it's kind of too simple. So there's some weird things going on here. So if you flip the bug over, this is the underside, the ventral side, and you can see that it has legs even in the amber. So if you look here, those are its thoracic legs. So it's not like these appendages are really for movement as far as we can tell. 
and we zoom in here and there's some very strange structures again. So you have the antennae on the head again, this with the question mark. You can even tell that the, the researchers are a little confused. They think this might be the labium. And I would say it, it almost certainly is. So let me change colors here so we can see a little better. So the labium is kind of has these stylets or maybe it's part of the hypopharynx or something like that. Uh, and it's forming into this needle, into this beak-like structure here. So the labium is the lower jaw of an insect. And you can kind of see on a, on a pronathus insect, this area here would usually be called uh, the gula or uh, the postmentum, something like that. And it kind of has that structure, but there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. Like what is going on here? You, you see that it has jointed legs, fairly well-developed jointed legs. Frequently when you're talking about a larva that is like a beetle, uh, which this kind of resembles a beetle larva, the legs are frequently reduced. Uh, fly larvae don't have legs for the most part. Caterpillars have tiny little uh, legs that are, are reduced and they aren't generally this, they aren't one, this well-developed and two, Sometimes they don't even have all these segments. It's it's a very, very reduced structure. So you have this very um, well-developed walking leg structure, which you know might be something like uh, lacewing larva, something like that. More of these very, very strange sclerites. And again, these very bizarre abdominal appendages that we don't know what's going on. Uh, appended or uh, abdominal segment 11 is still really well-developed, which is kind of odd. And so this is an, an artist's rendition of what this insect would look like outside of the ember. Just looking at it, my first thought was, oh, it's some sort of beetle. But the more you look at it, kind of the weirder it gets. And this is the first record of this kind of insect ever being found, either alive or in fossils. And it is a... Uh, Kind of the first record, the first recorded time that this sort of morphology has ever been seen. And if you zoom in on these appendages, what they've pointed out that's hard to see in the amber is that the appendages seem to be frilled or spiked, which gives the impression of a gill, maybe. Uh, and the authors spend a lot of time talking about insects with gills and the similar structures here, but that just makes it weirder. And we'll get into that. So this is. Uh, one of the things that they threw out there, which is um, Dobson flies or Helgramites, uh, Helgra Dobson fly larvae or Helgramites, which are an aquatic, a large aquatic insect, kind of have this body shape. But generally speaking, the Megaloptera, the Dobson flies, are huge. <laughs> so this is what a Dobson fly lo larva looks like. So you have these abdominal pen appendages, but on the Dobson fly, these are gills. And you have uh, these structures at the end that our fossil doesn't have. Dobson flies do have good legs, but they don't have a piercing sucking mouth part, and they certainly don't have beaks. And they're, they're generally very, very large, whereas this fossil is something like one millimeter, one and a half millimeters. It's really, really small. So, so, so they, the authors were comparing it to Dobson flies. The other thing that I noticed that they did not mention is that almost all of these larvae that they're comparing them to have eyes. And this guy, as far as, they never mention it, I don't think. And from what I've been able to look at from this paper and another paper, it doesn't appear that this insect has eyes, which is very strange. Why does it have eyes? It, it, it tells you that it clearly doesn't need eyes. It's probably in some environment where there's no use for eyes. So frequently like tr tree dwelling insects don't have eyes in uh, larvae that live within the, the trunk of the tree, because what are you gonna use eyes for? Uh, it's pitch black in there and it just kind of uh, gets in the way. So they, they compare it to like the, uh, the coptera, these are the scorpion flies, they kind of have a beak, but only in the adults, the larvae don't have this beak. But there is one kind of, uh, is this a coilopid? I can't remember which beetle this is, but there is a bee, a fungus feeding beetle that does have a beak. Uh, 
but it doesn't have any of the other characteristics of this group. It doesn't have these weird abdominal appendages. It doesn't have this bizarre sort of uh, thoracic and abdominal sclerotization pattern. It's a uh, serilonini Cer is the subfamily. So serilonidae. They, they are the beetles that have these beaks. And they do point this out kind of repeatedly that insects that tend to have this very rare uh, beak mouth part arrangement tend to be fungal feeders. And it's apparently something that's useful for uh, piercing into the fungal tissue to suck out the, the liquids. So the head kind of implies that it's some sort of mushroom living insect, but the abdomen and those weird structures kind of give off the vibe of an aquatic insect or an aquatic beetle of some sort. And so they compared it to known morphologies. These are insects that currently exist uh, and they're all coleoptera. So these are all beetles. The ones that are most similar, again, you have a gyrinus. This is a, an aquatic insect and it's very similar, but the, the head is completely wrong and it's not a fungal feeder. It doesn't have this sort of relationship. They compared it to a, it's, I believe this is a lamaxillid. Yeah, this is a lamaxillid. This is a, uh, a an insect that lives inside rotting wood. And again, there's some similarities, but it's just, it's not right. And then if you're talking about the thoracic leg arrangement, this is a, a glowworm, a lampyrid. So you have kind of these weird mix of parts. And then you have the abdominal sort of appendages of a dobson fly, and there's just a lot of weird stuff going on. And there's a bunch of other characteristics uh, that is more reminiscent of something like a lace wing. There's just weird stuff. So then they compared this again to more types of smaller uh, uh, Macoptera larvae. So the Macoptera adult has that beak, but the larvae uh, who have the appendages don't have the head. And these appendages in the Macoptera are not gills. These are just kind of fleshy appendages, which some larvae have. And that's not particularly odd. A, a larva with fleshy appendages isn't weird. What's weird is how big these appendages are. The kind of wingspan of, of one of these appendages or two of these appendages on an abdominal segment is almost the length of the insect. It's huge. What are they using these eno enormous appendages for? So all of this came together. They could not distinguish where in the kind of hierarchy of insects this insect would fall. So what order is it in, anything like that. So if you've been following this channel, you're familiar with this uh, tree that I've used a million times. And they're sure it's a holometabola. So this down here, these are the holometabola, uh, the holometabolous insects. These are the insects with larvae. And they're pretty sure it's falling into this group, the Neuropterida. So the Neuroptera and their close relatives. So everything between the beetles and the Neuroptera. It's somewhere in here, but they can't just they can't get it down any farther. They're they're not entirely sure. So that was in 2020. So then we add to the mystery. Another one was found in 2022. Only this one. It's again, very small, maybe about one millimeter, and it appears to be a completely different species than the one that they found. The one that they found, uh, the genus is Partisaniferous, uh, and the specific epithets on these are very long and very strange. It's, it's fusions of people's names, as far as I can tell. Um, but they found another one in amber, and it still has that beak, but um, it doesn't have the very distinctive uh, uh, thoracic and abdominal sclerotization pattern. The hind end here is completely different. And these abdominal appendages are completely different. You don't have these giant appendages. You just have these little nubbins. So now there's two species within this Partisaniferous genus, and there's absolutely no idea what they are. It's very, very strange. And it's just another paleoentomology mystery. But I figured I'd share it with you guys. It's a really interesting paper. I'll link it in the description uh, and I'll talk to you guys later.